I was born in a country, uh, name now I'm talking to you. I was born in Iran in 1933, and, uh, and the country at that time was under the Shah government, very, very secular country, and I was Armenian and Christian, and I was born in Persia during the Shah's era, and I was raised in Iran, and I went to the Iranian school, I grammar school, then high school, then I also went to the medical school, and I graduated from medical school in 1960, and at that time, my, my father died, and uh, I decided to come to the United States to continue my education. As a doctor, we could not come out of country uh, with any kind of visa except exchange visitor. So my plan was just to come here as exchange visitor and continue my medical education and then probably go back to Iran, which my mother still lived there. I'm the only child. So when I came to the United States, I arrived to Manhattan, New York, and Grand um, now Kennedy Airport at that time was not Kennedy Airport, International Airport, and with exchange visitor visa, and started residency in Bayonne Hospital, Bayonne, New Jersey, as a, actually as an intern at that time. One year we had to do rotating internship. And I became a student in the United States, and was supposed to continue my education here. And uh, at that time, I actually met my husband, Tom Simonian, and he was American-born, Armenian descent, and I was Armenian, born in Iran, and we met, and we got married, and I married to an American citizen. But I, as an exchange visitor, at that time, was a very strict law. You could not, even if you married to an American citizen, you still couldn't become a citizen. So when we married, then I had to go to Florida, Miami University. I did my residency on a pediatric, and I, at that time I had a son, which is Gareth's father, Armin, in my university in Miami during my education. Say uh, hi. Say how you became a citizen. Before and then we tried, my husband tried, to apply for me to become a citizen, but unfortunately, because the laws were so strict, you, as an exchange visitor, even if you married to an American citizen, you couldn't become a citizen, and even you had an American-born child, you still couldn't become a citizen. So it seemed that we had to continue my education, then I still could not be a citizen, although my son was growing up, and I came back to Manhattan, New York, and I went to Sloan Kettering Institute to study more on pediatric oncology. And we were trying to get a citizenship and hardship for my husband to go to Iran with me, which is a foreign country for him, to take my son out of the United States. Well, we didn't argue. We just said, okay, let me get finished my education, and if we have to go, then I will go. And the law was that you had to go out of country for two years, and then after that, reapply to come as a um, permanent resident or citizen. But at that time, during the presidency of Johnson, there was some shortage of doctors through the whole United States. And Johnson put a law that would accept foreign medical graduates who did their education here, their part, and they passed their medical licenses. They were full-fledged American practicing doctors to be granted to get a permanent residency. So automatically, all of a sudden, one day, I got a card, a letter from immigration that you are going to be granted for permanent residency. Please come for interview. So we went for interview after at least five years, maybe five years of being non-citizen and I got my uh, permanent residency and uh, three years later I applied for citizenship 
and I got my citizenship. And uh, that was my story uh, as right, coming so to the United States. You came over to the United States on an exchange, exchange visa visitor. for education and then later applied for citizenship exactly. because you got married mm -hmm. to an American mm -hmm. citizen. All right, so explain how your husband Tom's parents immigrated from Armenia to that was, America. That was a little bit sad story because uh, my story was that I was, although raised and born in a Muslim country, um, Shia country in Iran, there was a secular country and uh, religion was no matter, a Christian and a Jew and a Muslim lived next to each other, went to school with each other, there's no discrimination. And Armenians came to Iran because one of the Persian kings, Shah Abbas, went to Armenia 300 years ago, brought a lot of Armenians who were architects and designers and jewelers and rug makers and doctors and educators to Iran and gave him a town of Jolfa and told them you can live there free, you can make your churches, you can be Christian and you build Iran and make Iran half of the world. In Persian they say, make Iran Nesve Jahan. So all these buildings, minarets, mosques, rugs and jewelers at those days was made by Armenians and they became merchants. So we lived a very, very good life. Never saw any difficulty or any massacres or anything. Unfortunately, when I met my husband, their family were not that fortunate. They lived, my husband's, my husband's father and mother, they used to live in an area in Armenia by name of Lege, which was a part of Armenia. But uh, in 1914, the Islamic country of Turkey uh, started to bothering Armenians, telling them that they have to lose their Christianity and accept Islamic religion. And Armenians, who were the first people in the world to accept Christianity, before the Catholicism, before the other Christian religion, it's in the Bible, Armenia, the first country in the world that after Christ accepted Christianity. They used to be a Zaratoshtian fire worshiper, but they became Christian. So Armenians said they will not change their religion. It's a small country in the northern of Iran, between the Turkey and Iran, and above the Caspian Sea. Uh, so the Turkish people insisted that Armenians have to become Muslim. Armenians didn't accept. So then 1918, there was a first genocide, uh, actually the first Holocaust or genocide. They went rampaging, killing Armenians, raping their female girls, they destroyed their businesses, they took their money, they occupied their lands and Armenians were, one and a half million Armenians were killed between 1916 to 1918. And they all disturbed, whoever was lived alive, they were all taken away in the deserts, hungry. Actually they lived with the pomegranate, that's why pomegranate is an Armenian food. They were drinking pomegranate juice and eating pomegranate. They were disturbed many places. Some of them went to France. Some of them survived, went to Syria, Lebanon. At that time there was no Lebanon, just Syria. So my husband's father had, there were five brothers. All the brothers were, except one of them was my father and his brother was survived, but uh, the other three brothers were killed. He was survived and he came in Lyon, France, and from Lyon, France to Syria. In Syria he met Gareth's father's mother, Gareth's grandmother, and um, she was another survivor. Her story, which is Gareth's grandmother, was that she was in a church when they were burning the church completely with people alive. She was only a three, four-year-old girl in the church and somebody was calling the name Haikanush, Haikanush, she thought they calling her and she left the church. That's the way she survived. A Kurdish family took the grandmother home and raised her for many, many years. 
you know, some of her family members finally they find that, her. That's my that's great. Your grand, that's, that's your grand. That's my great. My great grandmother. Great grandmother. Garrett's, yeah, great grandmother. Richard Garrett's father's mother. So that's uh, the way his she survived. And then Garrett's grandfather, which is my um, my husband's father, they he came to United States because his great uncle was in United States at that time in Rhode Island and it's a shoe shop. He sponsored a lot of Armenian boys who were survivors as his sons and brought them to United States, adopted them as their sons. The only real relative of his was Hoanes, which is John in English, Hoanes Simonian, that was his brother's son. And they came to United States and they came to Ellis Island. Unfortunately, Hoanes or John's face had a lot of pot marks and they were thought that he may have uh, chicken, they thought chicken pox and they thought he had smallpox. They were worried about it, he had a little fever and they kept him isolated in a hospital area or isolation area for one month in Ellis Island and they didn't let him to get out. Finally he got out and he came to Rhode Island to his uncle's home and after that he immigrated to New Jersey. He started to make a little business dry cleaning at that time originally and he brought his his brother and he brought his brother from France and he also brought his wife. He sent money uh, to his fiance in Syria and brought his wife, Haikanush, and they got married in the United States and he started a business and moved to Jersey City and opened up a dry cleaning and another dry cleaning for his Actually, two brothers. I'm sorry, two brothers. With him, the three brothers were here. Two brothers were killed. So one Sarkis and Kevork, the two brothers, and he made some business for them also. Was a very very successful man, very brilliant, intelligent man, and he had two sons, which was Tom and Simon. That's Garrett's, actually uncles, and. Um, so they lived many years with his wife in Jersey City and I was married to his son, which is Tom Simonian and they were, their family was survivor of genocide. They never forgive Turks what they did to their family, and, but I was not involved with genocide. I was raised in, in a very secular, nice country of Iran at that time, before the Islamic Revolution recently. And I stayed in the United States and I'm still functioning as a physician uh, till now. And I got my third specialty as emergency medicine. And I raised my two sons, which is Gareth's father and his uncle in the United States. And I owe everything to my education in Iran and in the United States. And I love this country and my husband's family also survived and loved this country till their death. Alright, now that we've heard about your immigration, since we're also doing politics and social studies, how do you feel about the four candidates that are running for the Republican Party in well, the presidential race? Actually, since my father, my family, and my husband's family were all man-made, self-made people. No, I said politics. They work hard and they whatever. made themselves. They were not ever, ever dependent on a government, right. they were not ever dependent. So, All right, but how do you feel about the Republican candidates? Unfortunately, trying to say that till now I listen to them, I listen to their discussions, I listen to their idea, I still personally have not yet to concluded that any one of them can really fix the mess that we are in. Do you like Obama? He's our president. I like my president, no matter who it is. Unfortunately, I think he did a good job. I think he did a good job. Person, I don't think he did a good job for the country. I'm sorry to say, personally, maybe he believed. I am sure that he definitely believed that he has done perfect job. But what, in my opinion, he has expanded the power of government, and he's not 
doesn't have any... What about, um, what about Newt Gingrich? Well, Newt Gingrich is more... Um, he, he believes on Constitution more than Obama. The only thing I'm against Obama that he really did not continue. I'm a foreign person here, but I adored American Constitution. Uh, the fatherhood, the people who made that consti Constitution. Every American student should learn the Constitution from A to Z and stick to it, because this country from nothing became the number one country. We do not have to apologize to anybody. We should stay put that we are the best country in the world. We are there always to help anybody. We don't want abuse people. We don't go conquer the places to take abuse them. We All help right. them. And none of those people, in my opinion, at this minute, are that powerful to be able to manage the situation that we are. All right. But if whoever you, it is, if I will you support got them. nominated as president, which you say would probably be better than any of the Republican candidates, what would be the first thing that you would do in office? The first thing I do the office, I would say America first. America number one. I would not, no. I would go talk to all these people who hate us, no matter how much money we give them. I said, listen, listen, you did 9-11 for us. Another thing like 9-11, you're the end of you, period. Eye to eye. Your, your religion believes eye to eye. I am going to be eye to eye. You try to disturb my country, you try to get rid of my constitution, that's the end of you. Period. Oh, would you bomb them? To get rid I of them? I think I would negotiate them and tell them the truth. That reason, due to those religion beliefs, we all are human beings, we all are the same people. Try to negotiate as much as possible and try to stop all this aid that I'm giving to those foreign countries when they hate me. I definitely, in that part, I'm just like very, very isolationist. <laughs> and then, after that, I believe on drill, drill, drill. My own oil. I don't want to buy their oil, I don't want to buy Venezuelan oil, Brazilian oil, anybody's oil, my own oil. After that, I want a free enterprise. You work, you get the money. You don't work, I only help the invalids, the disabled, the blinds, the sick ones, the mentally challenged children, people who need real help. You can work, you can clean the house, you can go cut the grass, you can do any kind of job. All right, That's thank you. Is.